Good morning and Happy New Year. Please take your bulletin and, and turn uh, to the first page. Stand with me as we begin with Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath, we are dismayed. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? Please turn with me to page 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. us. 
Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to worship you, and we thank you for the life you have given in this new year. Lord, we pray your blessings upon us as we study your word, because you are the source of life. In the name of your Son, Jesus, we pray. Please be seated.
Good morning. Um, the first reading is from Revelation 12, 1 through 17. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun and with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crowd, crown of 12 stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. And another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his heads seven diadems. His tail swept through a third of the stars of heaven and cast them down to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. But her child was caught up to God and to his throne, and the woman fled into the wilderness, where she had a place prepared by God, in which she was to be nourished for 1,260 days, about three and a half years. Now war rose in heaven, Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back. But he was defeated, and there is no longer any place for them in heaven. And the great dragon was thrown down, that ancient serpent who is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was thrown down to the earth, and his angels thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice in heaven saying, Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. And they have conquered him with the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell with them, in them. But woe to you, O sea and earth, for the devil has come down to you in great wrath, because he knows that his time is short. When the dragon saw he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the male child. But the woman was given the two wings of a great eagle so that she may fly from the serpent into the wilderness to the place where she is to be nourished for a time and times and half a time. The serpent poured water like a river out of its mouth after the woman to sweep her away with a flood. But the earth came to help to the help of the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed the river that the dragon had poured from its mouth. Then the dragon became furious with the woman and went off to make war with the rest of her offspring on those who keep the commandments of God and hold the testimony of Jesus. And he stood on the sand by the sea. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading, Romans chapter 8, verses 31 through 39. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Who is to condemn? Christ Jesus is the one who died. More than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. 
who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, quote, For your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered, end of quotes. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, or, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ in Christ in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand with me for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the second chapter. Now when they had departed, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. And he rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. And he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under according to the time that he had ascertained by the wise men. Then was fulfilled what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, weeping in loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children. She refused to be comforted, because they are no more. But when Herod died, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, Rise, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Egypt, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And he rose and took the child and his mother and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. And he went and lived in a city called Nazareth, so that what was spoken by the prophets might be fulfilled that he would be called a Nazarene. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Thank you for that excellent piano playing. This morning, it's the first Sunday after Christmas, and we've all got, already have a big disruption coming into the Holy Family's life. Uh, when I first put a title, I, I put down for the Matthew one in the Gospel that this was like a historic, but the Revelations one historic too. But, but what it does is, it's the Gospel account of exactly what happened with Herod and so on, and then Revelation, it kind of gives us behind the scene of what's happening behind all of this. So anyway, it starts out in Matthew chapter 2. Behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Rise, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. And remain there until I tell you, for Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. A lot of times, those of us who you know, study the Bible and everything, we, uh, Egypt is kind of put in a bad light because we look at the time of Egypt with the Pharaoh that had put the Israelites into slavery and, and so on, wouldn't let his people go. But the first Pharaoh was someone God used to save the people. There was a famine coming, and, and uh, God used Joseph through that Pharaoh to save probably millions of people. And now we have another instance where Egypt becomes the safe place uh, for the people of God to go. And Israel was the dangerous place at that time. But God had a plan. He knows how to save us. He knows how to work things out. He has a plan that's ahead of time put into effect and made. So it says, Joseph rose and took the child and his mother by night and departed to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Out of Egypt I called my son. Then Herod, when he saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, became furious. And he sent and killed all the male children in Bethlehem and in all that region who were two years old or under. And suddenly the Christmas story becomes uglified? That's not a word. That's what the problem is if you don't actually write your sermons. You've got to look for words you don't know. But it's an ugly sight to think of these Roman soldiers with their swords going into Bethlehem and killing all these babies Snatching them from their mothers. And it says, when Herod died, that's a time later, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt, saying, rise, take the child and his mother to go to the land of Israel, for those who sought the child's life are dead. And repeatedly we're seeing that God had a plan. He sends his angels. He sends directions. He knows how to save us. And he definitely knows how to preserve his son through his childhood so that he can reach his mission for his life. But when Joseph heard that Archelaus was reigning over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And again... Being warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee. It was prophesied that Jesus would go to Egypt. It was prophesied that before this ever happened that these children would be slaughtered. And it was prophesied that he would end up living in Nazareth and he would be called a Nazarene. I got to say it. I mean, my wife's upbringing was as a Nazarene. So if you have Nazarene background, you're smiling right now that Jesus was called a Nazarene. But behind the scenes, Revelations 12 talks about what was happening. I'm going to brief this down because... If I read the whole thing, there, there's, uh, 
Well, if you want to know more about that, come to the Bible class after. But I'm, I am going to, to be reading portions of that Revelation 12 passage. It says, A great sign appeared in heaven, a woman who was pregnant and was giving birth. Now that should ring bells for all of us as we look at the Christmas nativity scene. And then it says, and behold, a great red dragon, not just Herod, not just the government, but something behind the seeds, stood before the woman and was about to give birth so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. And there's another prophecy from the scriptures that the one who would be born, the child who would be born, would rule the nations one day. And it says the woman, woman fled into the wilderness where she has a place prepared by God. God provides that place for you and me too. Don't ever give up on your mission for your life. You might get discouraged. We'll see how Satan works more. But hang in there. Because God has a plan for your life. It's not just general. Not, not that I, the way I see the scripture. And I know some people approach and just, well, it's just there's choices to be made. Now you're a Christian, so you don't have to pray about it. Just make whatever decisions you want. But that if you do have proof for that from scriptures, please share it with me, because to me, I keep seeing over and over that there is a divine plan, uh, especially for his son, but for us too. And he has a place of protection prepared for you. Things don't surprise God. He loves you. He knows what's going to happen. And then it says, now war arose in heaven and Michael and his angels fighting against the dragon and the dragon his angels fought back. So spiritual warfare in reality in heaven. But he was defeated and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. Thank God they not only got defeated, but they got thrown out of the place. Aren't you glad to know that Satan doesn't have an ear with Jesus? and with God the Father anymore. He was defeated and was no longer any place for them in heaven, and the great dragon was thrown down, and then he starts getting very specific, explaining to us exactly who this great dragon is. He says that ancient serpent, that Nahash in the Garden of Eden, who is called the devil and Satan. No mistake about it. And it says the deceiver of the whole world Satan is a liar. He is the father of lies. Jesus talked about that. And he was thrown down to the earth and his angels who were, were thrown down with him. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, the accuser of our brothers has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. He is the accuser of all believers. And think about what he did with Jesus too. They kept on trying to sift through his life, sift through his words, everything he did to find something because they were jealous of him. He was coming in as this shining example of a true prophet, a, a real man of God, and he wasn't brought up in their denomination I'm thinking Nazarenes again. I think he probably was a Nazarene. But, he, but uh, anyway, he, uh, I'm sorry, I'm throwing myself off my sermon. They tried, he tried, and he used people. It says all the time, they said, they were going to destroy him. They were going to eliminate him. They'd made plans on how they would kill him. Keeps coming up over and over, and Jesus keeps telling his disciples, I want you to know that not everything is always going to be rosy, that they're going to, and he puts it in better words than me, but they're going to arrest me. They're going to falsely accuse me. They're going to crucify me on the cross. 
And he prepares them somewhat ahead of time that life does have suffering. They're, they love him so much. They love following him so much. They love his friendship. But he's going to be crucified and killed on a cross. And he has enemies. Gospel of John, and I keep on seeing it even more in the other, well, it, it, often in the other ones. You know, they insult him. They make lies about him. Uh, it doesn't get him anywhere. They just keep over and over, and every try, it says, it'll say like they tried to trick him into saying something wrong. Like, uh, Rabbi, should we pay to Caesar or to God? And he gives them an answer that has so much wisdom to it that it just shuts them up. And they keep on trying to come up with trick things. So they, they, uh, when they finally do take him to trial, they find some real lousy kind of guys, right? Ones that will lie. You want to have some of the worst drugs of the society, and they come in and they make false accusations against Jesus, and no matter how much they do, it, it, it's just not landing on him. But if Satan is the accuser of Jesus all the time of lies, think what it's going to be like for us. I mean, we actually give the devil some ammunition, right? I mean, I give some ammunition to the Lord or to Satan to accuse me because I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and so on. So if he starts accusing me of being a sinner and not worthy of God's love, he's already got some ammunition to work with. But do not think that he will not try to accuse you. And I, I, I've come to grow in my mind about learning to live under grace. He will accuse you. He will bring up everything you've ever done before. He will repeatedly bring them, even though he tempted you into it and he was involved, he'll bring them up before your face and say, see, you are worthless. You should kill yourself. God can't love you. There is no purpose. All of these accusations, it says, the accuser of our brothers in Revelation has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. Well, before our God, that's, that's no longer operating. But that doesn't mean he doesn't accuse you to your face and that he can't use people to do it. And shame on us if we ever bring false accusations against someone else. Shame on us if we ever say horrible, mean things to someone else to try to make them feel worthless because that's the work of the devil. Anyway, continuing in Revelation, it says, and when the dragon saw that he had been thrown down to the earth, he pursued the woman who had given birth to the, main child, the male child. And uh, in Revelation, you'll find some people, well, this woman, it certainly represents Mary and the Holy Family, but it also seems to represent the people of God too. And, he can and you'll see at the end, that's exactly what he does. But it's just saying, he doesn't give up. And either should you. But the woman was given, and this is back to Revelation, the, the two wings of a great eagle, so that she might fly from the serpent into the wilderness, to the place where she is to be nourished for time and times and times and a half. I would guess that this is symbolic. But what represents is God's miraculous way to get you out of places. No temptation has seized you except what is common to man, Paul writes. And God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted and tested and tortured, you could say, by Satan beyond what you can bear. But he'll give you the wings of an eagle to get out of there. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, 
I think one of the, the great, uh, there can be all kinds of storms around us, right? In life and so on. Uh, and there's only one safe to, place to be, and that's right with the Lord. It's like the eye of a storm, you know? Did you ever see that? They got big, horrible hurricanes are coming over, and then these planes, and this is not something I would want to volunteer for, but they, play right, they fly right into the storm, into the eye of the hurricane. And if you're in the eye of the hurricane, you're safe. And if you're in the very presence of God as the apple of his eye, that's your place of safety. And God says back to the accusations of Satan and his lies, I love this man, this woman, this girl, this boy. I've loved them so much that I sent my son to die for them. And they are so valuable and worth so much to me that I was willing to give the life of my very son. And it's the gospel. That, that's those words of the assurance of salvation that we keep on. I am forgiven. I am a child of God. God loves me. And Jesus loves me is one of the greatest songs ever written, isn't it? And it says, then the dragon became furious. I mean, he was pretty rotten already, but now he's really getting angry with the woman and went off to make war on the rest of her offspring. That's talking about all the people of God, the church, all the people who believe. In Psalm 90, you know, we have a real gift here. It's a prayer of Moses. And uh, he says, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. And if you will, it's like being in the eye of the storm. It's being right in the center of God's presence all the time. He is our dwelling place. That's where it's safe. And then at the end of that psalm, he says, so teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. I have no proof for this, but I keep wondering. So I guess it's an excuse to say why I almost was late. <laughs> this morning, I, I was, uh, and I did, I got up real early. But uh, I just have a, a pattern. I like to go over things. I have to take a time of prayer. Uh, and sometimes when I look back up at the clock later on, I find out, oh, my Lord, look how late it is. I got to rush out to the church. I'm afraid people are going to be there already and say, what happened to him? Did he stay up too late for a New Year's Eve or whatever it was? And sometimes I just wonder maybe just to make an excuse, is it, you know, the, to, the day, to the Lord, it says in Psalm 90, uh, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. In other words, could it be sometimes we almost escape time when we have fellowship with God in that timeless space? You, you hear people, they'll say, they were dead for 40 minutes or whatever. They come back with a vision that they had. And they said, no, it feels like it was uh, two weeks or something, you know. The time's always different when, when you hear these stories. But you have the God of eternity giving you the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And you have no reason to hang your head in shame because your sins have been forgiven. And guess what? If you're aware of your sin and you're aware of that forgiveness, that just makes you love the Lord all the more and appreciate him all the more. And I want to just land on uh, Romans chapter 8, one of the most beautiful chapters in the whole Bible. Because this is the one that gives you that assurance. Go to Romans 8 if you're feeling accused, if you're feeling, I just don't know if I can make it, I don't know if I can do this again. And Paul says, what shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And the cross shows that God is for you. 
He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Yeah, the generosity of God. Personally, I think like, I don't deserve anything, but you know, if I have a shack in heaven, that's fine with me. I kind of like rustic areas, places a little more than fancy anyway. But it's saying here that he will give you all things. Not because you deserve it, but because he loves you. And because you said yes to his son. So who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. In other words, the accuser of the brethren just isn't going to have any audience whatsoever. Who is to condemn Christ Jesus is the one who died, more than that, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed is interceding for us. Sometimes you got to take a break from your prayer and say, listen to God's voice saying, don't worry about it. Christ Jesus right now is interceding for you. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or danger, or sword, or the accusations of Satan, even if they come directly through him in your heart and mind, or if they come through some pitiful person who becomes a tool to talk you down as if you're nothing? Shall any of these things separate us from the love of God? As it is written, for your sake we are being killed all the day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. And the Apostles' Creed can be found uh, in the back cover of your hymnal. And please turn there with me as we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Heavenly Father, we praise you and, and we, we relish the thought and the truth to know that there is now no condemnation for those who are in your Son, Christ Jesus, our Messiah. And that you love us and you see us through his eyes and we are clean before our Lord. How we thank you, how we worship, how we love you because of your great mercy and grace towards us. And Father, we, we think of all our families, our, the members of this church family, and, and all of our friends, and we pray, Lord, that the gospel would be uh, clearly understood by all, received, and that you would give us hope and endurance through everything that comes in this coming year in 2023. We especially think of Rachel, as she's going into surgery, we pray for your miraculous guidance to the doctors and, and to the surgery and that you'll bring her healing and protect her and bring her back to her family, make her healthy. 
Father, we think of uh, Danny's family and friends. Lord, I thank you for the privilege of being able to proclaim the gospel yesterday at the memorial service. And I pray that your word, nothing's based upon the power of our ability to speak or anything else, but it is your word that has power by your spirit. Use that word to really grab a hold of every heart, especially for those who might not have ever come to faith in you. And Lord, we pray that you'll remind them of your love and draw them to yourself. And we do pray that for all of our, 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 our loved ones. Father, we pray for Dave and Wayne and Gail, Helen and Mindy, Rosemary, Rita and Pam, Charlotte, Barb and Tracy, and all those who, who are not with us this, 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 this uh, morning. And we pray for those who are, have, will be traveling back and forth or who have family traveling back and forth. Lord, we pray for Donna Huser, Joanne Mansky. We pray for Megan overseas, Lord. Help her to hang in there until her time of service is up. And Lord, actually give her joy and a good time and show her the purpose you have for her now that she is there. And each one of us, Lord, we, we seek your specific guidance for our lives. We, we want your will to be done in our lives, not our own will. Lord, Heavenly Father, if your own son said, take this cup away from me, but not my will, but your will be done, Lord, how much more do we have to realize that our will can be different from yours? May your will be done in this coming year in our lives, and as we say that we pray for our government, we pray for weather, we pray for the economy, all of these things. Lord, that you help us live in peace so that we can live out our lives and as your church proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ and give us power over the authorities of darkness just as you did to his blessed mother to Joseph in guiding and protecting him, knowing that you will guide us and protect us all the way to the end. We ask this all in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places and in all circumstances give thanks to you for you are good and your mercy endures forever. And you are gracious and you love us. So with the angels and all the archangels and all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Sixty-two, the, the second column with the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you.
true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ given for you. Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. Take a need. This is the body of Christ given for you. Take a need. This is the body of Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. I guess. Take and eat. This is the body of Christ. And this is his blood shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen. body of Christ given for you. May the true body and blood of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and preserve you into life everlasting. Go in his peace. Amen.
please uh, continue on page 164 as we sing Thank the Lord, and please stand. O God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor 